This week is the deadline for all federal employees to remove Tic Tac from their government-issued devices. This comes days after a congressional hearing took aim at the social media app. But as NBC's Jake Ward reports, the U.S. is still trying to better understand the threat that the Chinese-owned platform may pose to users' privacy and to political influence through its use of algorithms. Ask an expert whether TikTok has compromised national security, and the answer is pretty clear. Have you seen no. much evidence of it? No. No. To date, no. We, look, we, we tend to wait until after the crisis to do something about anything. It's what could happen that seems to be the basis of the federal employee TikTok ban now taking effect. The right model here is less of a smoking gun and more of a loaded gun. The threat is twofold, security experts say. The ability to feed propaganda to the American population through an app used by roughly one in three Americans and the ability to monitor those 150 million people on a near daily basis. I think if you were an intelligence service and you wanted to have the ability to spy on and build profiles on a significant portion of a population, there's no better way you could do it than by creating this incredibly fun app. Tech experts point out TikTok isn't that functionally different from any social media platform these days. There are tens of thousands of apps that have, that we know, you know, take in as much data as TikTok that have far less scrutiny and attention paid to them. But it's almost impossible to look inside any social media company because while the U.S. requires transparency about, say, the financials of public companies or safety recalls in cars, it does not mandate any data transparency standards. So much of this is just about uh, anxiety about the role that these platforms are playing and not having enough data to know for sure if any of the things they're telling us are true. Chinese law requires Chinese companies cooperate with its intelligence services. But in his testimony last week, CEO Shozi Chu insisted TikTok is not controlled by the Chinese government. Bottom line is this. American data stored on American soil by an American company overseen by American personnel. But the White House is demanding that its Chinese parent company ByteDance either sell or face an outright ban. It's really important that we view what evidence we have in the context of the totality of the circumstances of the motivations of the Chinese Communist Party when it comes to information and communication technology platforms. And the index of suspicion should be high. And a ban would achieve geopolitical parity. After all, China has banned our social media. If TikTok wants to work in the United States, then China has to be open to Western social media firms. And that just seems like a fairly obvious point. What we do know, of course, is that experts have told lawmakers for years that there's a correlation between rising rates of depression in young people and the rise of social media of all kinds. Research reveals that in the hours following social media use, teens paradoxically report increases rather than decreases in loneliness. And perhaps that is the risk to go after first. Overwhelmingly, the danger here is the fact that the kids are not all right. One thing the United States could do very easily is just say social media is banned under 18. You resolve 95% of your TikTok problem that way. Jake Ward, of course, reporting for us. And China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs says that its government has never and would never ask a company to collect private data in violation of local laws. But China does have a federal law that permits them to do exactly that.